be recording it. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. This is this would be our eighth webinar uh, series uh, in which Rhea Akmegji will be presenting her presentation. Uh, Rhea, she has a BS in environmental health from the Faculty of Health Science in EUB and then she did her thesis in uh, uh, ecosystem management from the Agri Faculty of Agriculture in the summer of 2021. Uh, in which she did a comparative study of a protected area in the Biosphere Reserve in Lebanon. And currently she's working at uh, the other Dada as a forest maker where they plant forests on degraded lands. Uh, I'll keep the floor to her and thank you everyone for joining. Hi everyone. Um, so do I start directly with my presentation. Well yes, if you can say, share your presentation and keep your video on because it's yes. nice to see you while you're presenting. Okay. Um, okay, so hi again, everyone. Uh, my thesis topic was a comparative study of a protected area and a biosphere reserve in Lebanon. So I had two case studies, which were uh, a comparison between the Hadish Ahidim protected area and uh, the um, Jabal Musa Biosphere Reserve. So the first thing I asked myself was what is conservation and how did it actually start? So conservation is a comprehensive approach to preserving and taking care of what's already there for the future generation. It includes restoration of what has been destroyed by using ethical, social, and scientific tools with the help of environmental laws and regulations. So it started, uh, it started in response to uncontrolled urban expansion, industrial growth and exploitation of raw material. Back in the day, people used to depend completely on coal. And that's when they realized that it's not an infinite source. So they came up with the concept of conservation. So back in the 60s and the 70s, two conservation concepts uh, were created, which were the IUC and protected areas and UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. So the first uh, conservation was the IUCN protected areas, which were established by the IUCN in the 1960s. Their goal is biodiversity conservation, provision of clean air, water, and the protection against natural disasters as a result of climate change. So, uh, and they contribute to livelihoods of local communities and serve as a source of income to millions of people through tourism. Uh, the second conservation area, which uh, came after protected areas, were the UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. UNESCO organized the Biosphere Conference in 1968 that recognized the concept of Biosphere Reserve, but came up with the Man and Biosphere Program in 1970. And they, these areas are uh, areas which are internationally recognized, they but are nominated by government and serve as a laboratory for monitoring the management of land, water, biodiversity, and the entire environment. So key to a successful conservation, whether it's protected areas or biosphere reserves, uh, is their governance structure. A governance structure is a sound governance structure, uh, guides conservation, helps with decision making, and it creates some type of a bond between the on-site management team and the stakeholders, whether it's international stakeholders or national. So IUCN and, um, uh, I mean, Protected areas and biosphere reserves have a completely different uh, governance structure because they're on, based on completely different uh, rules and regulations. The IUCN has what is known as the IUCN matrix. So the matrix is divided into four. This means that there, there are four categories to protected areas. Each category has what you know, has their type of uh, governance and their type of management. So the four types are government managed PA, protected areas, co-managed, private and community conserved areas. So for example, the government managed protected area can be a federal or national ministry or agency in charge of the area being protected. It can be a government delegate or a subnational agency. But for example, the private protected area can be an NGO or a for-profit organization or by an individual a person who owns the land. The UNESCO governance structure, however, is a bit more complicated than that of the uh, IUCN uh, protected areas. So um, the, the biosphere reserve management doesn't only depend on the on-site active members of the reserve, but also depends on how stakeholders and the team communicate with the international stakeholders, uh, the international stakeholders, the legislation they have, and the international framework. So the first uh, team established was the ICC, which is the International Coordinating Council. They work in parallel with the ACBR, which is the International Advisory Committee of Biosphere Reserves. Uh, 
in order to come up with these strategies for the biosphere reserve to implement. So the ICC is responsible for directing and implementing the program set by the General Council and comments which uh, are pointed by the ACB or the advisory committee. So the ICC uh, the, and the advisory committee also examined proposals for biosphere reserves as well as advi uh, advising, proposing changes and modifications to, in order to have a better and more sustainable uh, conservation. So the ICC and ACBR share their plan with, and proposal set with the um, MAB secretariat who shares the uh, who shares the information with the World Network of Biosphere Reserves? Uh, the Network of Biosphere Reserves later on uh, interchanges the information with the MAB supranational networks, who again give and take information from the MAB national committee and eventually to the individual biosphere reserve. Now the individual biosphere reserve is also responsible to give back information up to the ICC to, in order to keep this bond between the on-site management team and the international team. So the objective of my study is to understand the difference in governance between biosphere reserves and uh, protected areas. I investigated their history, establishment, governance, and current state. And my case study was between the Hadish Ehden protected area and Jabal Musa biosphere reserve. For my methodology, I conducted stakeholder analysis. I identified those who will be contacted uh, to hold interviews with, and I used the reputational approach. So I approached someone who has direct impact on the biosphere reserve or protected area, and they in turn gave me contacts to interview for my thesis. Uh, once uh, the stakeholders were identified, I, can, I prepared a questionnaire in English and Arabic uh, with the approval um, uh, with the approval and I conducted in-depth interviews with them. Uh, and the final stage was the transcription where I transcribed the information I gathered uh, and collected additional information such as maps, images uh, regarding the two areas. So the first study area is Harish Ehdin. It's situated on the upper northwest slopes of Lebanon, Mount Lebanon. It has an altitude of 1,200 to 2,000 meters and an area of 450 hectares. It is also home to around 40% of plant species in Lebanon. My second area is Rabal Musa. It's unlike Harish Ehdin, it, it actually includes seven different villages, which are Yahshu, Shurbele, Jurt al Termos, Nahar al Dahab, Ahmes, Shuwen, and Al Ibri. Uh, and it has an altitude of 350 to 1,700 meters with an area of 6,500 hectares. So uh, from my interviews, I was able to get uh, five, six different categories. Uh, for, for my results. So the first is the historical overview. Uh, Harish Ehden used to be a public land before becoming a protected area. The land was mainly used for grazing and because it was located in a Christian area, the church practiced ad hoc protection uh, from exploitation of the area. Uh, unlike Harish Ehden, Jabal Musa is uh, not public land, it's private and religious land holding. Uh, the land used to be used, even though it was a private land, the land was still used uh, for grazing, coring, and agriculture. Locals used to plant berries, wheat, and work in the silk industry during the Ottoman Empire, but many of these uh, uh, activities decreased with time. The second is the establishment. So um, Harish Ehdin was established in 1996 by the funding of Jeff. Protected areas did not exist in Lebanon prior to 1992, which was even before the uh, establishment of the Ministry of Environment in 1993. And Harish Ehdin was one of the first three protected areas in Lebanon. But in 1996, uh, they got the funding of Jeff which is when they were able to uh, actually invest and fund in uh, the protected area. It was, they created a local NGO for Harish Ehdin, financed through Jeff, backstopped by the IUCN and locally implemented by the UNDP. Once the funding from the IUCN came to an end, the Ministry of Environment took charge of it over the reserve. Jabal Musa, on the other hand, was initiated during the 2006 war. It was uh, managed by a private NGO called APJM, which is the Association for the Protection of Jabal Musa. Uh, when they wanted to first establish it, they, they submitted a proposal to the private landowners and the Ministry of Environment. When they took their approval, that is when they uh, submitted a proposal to, the UN to UNESCO and MAB National Committee, uh, where uh, they got the approval for the establishment of the a biosphere reserve, uh, and the, the biosphere reserve relies on the UNESCO and MAB guidelines. The third is the uh, governance. So, um, 
uh, when first established, you know, when they first got the ICN and JEP uh, support in 1996, they prepared a management team, which was set by the Ministry of Environment. Uh, they had a representative of the ministry. They, uh, they also had a representative of the ICN as well as on-site management team. Uh, once the project came to an end and the Ministry of Environment took charge, they created their own management team and the NGO they had later on turned to, into the on-site management team. And now they submit uh, monthly reports to the Ministry of Environment, uh, donors, NGOs, etc. Shaba and Musa, on the other hand, when first established, uh, they had the APJM and then they had their management team. Uh, the protection plan includes uh, protection of locals alongside the protection of the land, because one of the guidelines of the Man and Biosphere program is including locals in protection uh, to, in, in, in parallel to the uh, area perspective. But Musa works with the municipalities and landowners to establish their management plan. They also refer to the Ministry of Agriculture and Culture because of different agreements they've signed with them. And they conduct annual report to the different ministries as well as UNESCO, MAB, and NGOs. The fourth category is the ownership and regulation. Um, as I mentioned before, Harish uh, Ehdin was public land. This is why the Ministry of so, um, the, and because the protected areas uh, didn't exist before and uh, before uh, creating the Ministry of Environment, um, they uh, came up with a regulation in order to assign Harish uh, Ehdin and uh, as an official protected area, which was Regulation 121, issued by the Parliament for the establishment of protected areas. However, uh, on the other hand, Jabal Musa, being public, private land, they needed to address different uh, different uh, uh, ministries in order to get uh, approval. So based on regulation 7,494, the Lebanese parliament assigned the Jabal Musa as a biosphere reserve. They, they, and there's decision number 13 and 3 from the Ministry of Culture, decision number 299 from the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, and so they needed to sign the different uh, agreement to get to have it as an official biosphere reserve and later on they submitted this plan to uh, unesco the fifth is the perspective of locals now the perspective of locals were very similar uh, in both cases of harish Ehdin and jabal musa in both cases at first public didn't support it because they believed that the people who were who took charge of both areas, they wanted to take these lands from them, which would contribute to their livelihood. However, with time, locals started to understand the importance more. The coming, the new generation started to support it even more. And now they have a lot of support from the public uh, and from the uh, people living there. And the final is uh, their activities and tourism. Again, uh, with time, tourism and activities increased a lot in both Harish Ehdin and Jabal Musa. Uh, they got a lot of international donors for projects such as tree planting uh, and uh, trail maintenance, uh, and they focused a lot on education and awareness. So for my uh, discussion, uh, I was able to get actually uh, some differences uh, between protected areas and the uh, biosphere reserve from my uh, desk research as well as online research. So for my desk research, I was I got four, uh, there were four differences mainly observed between uh, the two reserves. The first is a zonation. So biosphere reserves um, depend on zonation, whereas protected areas protect the, the designated area as a whole. Biosphere reserves have divided the area into three, which uh, about the, they focus on contextualizing the area rich in biodiversity and need for protection. Uh, and have also the buffer zone, which shows continuity, and the transition zone, which focuses on sustainable development and, res uh, and, the, and the residents. So this means that the biosphere reserves focus on areas with strict protection, but also take into consideration the area around it. However, protected areas uh, prioritize and focus on the protection of nature in general. The second difference is the focus of biosphere reserves on sustainable development. Uh, so biosphere reserves consider and they, that to protect any area, sustainable development practices are a must. However, in protected areas, sustainable development is an aim, but is not considered as a core priority, whereas their core priority is the protection in general. 
The third is the governance, as I mentioned before. Uh, Biosphere reserves are the result of an organizational arrangement that include the public sector, whereas protected areas are established by governments that seek partnership with local authorities. So protected areas, they are more um, national uh, with ministries, whereas biosphere reserves are more inter are international with UNESCO and Man and Biosphere. And the fourth is the designation uh, of biosphere reserves and protected areas. A biosphere reserve has national and regional uh, importance, uh, whereas by, uh, protected areas are uh, assigned by government. From my on-site uh, research, uh, from my on-site research, uh, there were two main differences between Jabal Musa and Harish Ehdin. Uh, so the first is the difference in governance. Governance. So both Jabal Musa and uh, Harish Ehdin depend on a bottom-up approach, which is governed by their local NGO, uh, initially from, which was initially formed and turned later on into the management team. Uh, the biosphere differ uh, differ in that the former falls under the national government entity, which is the Man and Biosphere Program UNESCO. However, Harish Ehdin is a completely independent. Uh, they uh, and they do, you know, they uh, only report back to the Ministry of Environment, but they mainly depend on themselves. The second difference is the land ownership and governmental oversight. So because uh, biosphere reserves are established on uh, private land, uh, they, uh, they take everything into their own hands to do. So even uh, in the case of uh, the Harish Ehdin, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, established it based on, you know, they take everything into their own hands as well. And it, is, it has been seen in many different case studies as well. Uh, the difference is the impact of type land ownership that is mostly governance and reporting. So uh, the IUCN is based on the protected areas on public land controlled by a government body. Uh, and to accommodate uh, for conservation of private lands in Lebanon, they follow the rules and regulations established by ministries for the protection of biosphere reserves. So there isn't one uh, one ministry that they follow to, like for example, the core area of biosphere reserve is designated by the Ministry of Agriculture as a protected area. They, uh, the Ministry of Environment issued a decree to assign Jabal Musa as a biosphere reserve, and they have uh, also signed with the Ministry of Culture to conserve its rich, rich historical and cultural land. So the Jabal Musa uh, team biosphere uh, reserve is more complex and needs to address uh, this lack of intergovernmental clarity and alignment to redundancy and different reporting. There is many similarities between the two, uh, between by the Khalil Ahdin and the Jabal Musa. They both carry the weight of fundraising on their own. Protect the Harish Ahdin being under the Ministry of Environment, the ministry should support them, but uh, they do everything on their own and they get their own funding. And because Jabal Musa is private, so they depend on themselves to provide an income for the reserve. So they have approached different, uh, they have led uh, different and new independent strategies to generate income from the international funds and entrance fees. The second uh, similarity is research. Research is very important aspect in, um, in protection and conservation of the environment. They help in raising awareness and getting more audience. Uh, and uh, they help people see the importance as well as the challenges of these areas. Um, Unfortunately, there isn't much research going on. How, uh, although both teams are very willing to accept people into research uh, for, regarding their area, from my again, these uh, results are from my interviews, uh, and uh, the both uh, both teams are uh, want to engage more into research. And the final is the similarity and cooperation and coordination. Uh, the main aim of the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve uh, when first established was to ensure the cooperation and coordination between the biosphere and the people. Although community involvement is the objective of both the Jabal Musa Reserve and the Harish Ehdin, the scope of involving and impacting local communities in both cases is still limited in scope because they focus on conservation, much more than involving the locals, actually, and this leads to dissatisfaction among the residents. As a conclusion, uh, both uh, Jabal Musa, uh, you know, 
in Lebanon, the Jabal Musa Biosphere Reserve has not yet achieved its continuum and is operating as a protected area without a formal government support, uh, which is awarded to protected areas. And uh, the study revealed that a similarity in these efforts for protected areas and biosphere reserve put in terms of protection and local environment. Thank you. Thank you, Raya. It's uh, good to see you and see your work again. Uh, Thank you. The floor is open for discussions, uh, comments. Antonio, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hello, good morning. And thank you for your work. And Thank you. I'm, I, uh, because I'm studying also for my PhD, protected areas, and I I see a, an inconsistency uh, with uh, the definition of protected areas by IUCN, in the sense that you call uh, or hidden a protected area while uh, Jabal Musa biosphere reserve, and you differentiate between the two. While I see that protected area, or uh, I mean, both are protected areas, while Horsch had an, a natural reserve and Jabal Musa Biosphere Reserve. What I'm saying is that uh, both are protected areas because protected areas are a status. Uh, I mean, the definition by IUCN, if I'm not wrong, I will take it. Uh, it's a. Uh, um, let me take it. I have it here. Um, no, I don't have it here. Anyways, it's a. Uh, I mean, I see that they are both protected spaces, while the designation is different. So, yeah. uh, one is biosphere or the other is nature reserve. I just wanted to be sure about it because I'm studying also the same topic. So. I don't know if uh, I got it wrong or you yes. Got so it. the difference mainly is that the biosphere reserve has donations, whereas what I'm let's just say what I'm saying for, as a protected area does not. And they protect the area in general, but uh, the biosphere reserve has separated and divided them into different zones. Yeah, like the yes, core buffer and. Uh, it's just about a matter of concept. Yeah. Eh? Um, there's a misunderstanding in the definition in a lot of these you know, there are different definitions and different researches so it's a bit confusing maybe yeah 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 i'm usually referring to the ucn definition which yeah. is uh, any geographical space protected by i don't remember the exact yeah. definition uh, and i see that they are both protected areas but the designation is different one is natural reserve and the other is biosphere reserve and Joel, I think uh, you are on the same page, no? Yes. Yes, uh, can I intervene just a second? Yes. Joel, yes. go ahead, please. Because actually I had the first uh, same impression from the title uh, that yes, uh, actually we can, um, I will have a question later, but for this subject, uh, you know, uh, we are a protected area. Uh, but the difference is um, the approach to conservation, how it is done, you know, uh, in Harsh Ehden, it's a nature reserve by law. Yeah. Uh, we are a biosphere reserve, so it is one category of protected area. And in IUCN, there is a category of IUCN privately protected areas. I mentioned that uh, actually before. Wait, let me. Yes. So uh, in terms of uh, really separation, maybe it would be uh, better to say the difference between a biosphere reserve and a nature reserve. You know, a, a Lebanese, like nature reserve, it's the designation by law at the Ministry of Environment. So I agree. So basically what you're saying that to establish the difference, the focus is between nature reserve and biosphere reserve and both are protected areas. Yes, yes. So it's the naming that you yeah, want me yeah, to yeah, just clarify. Yeah. Okay. Makes yes. sense. And, and I have I, a question later, yes. if, if you, okay. if, when we finish from this subject, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, so Zaz, you have a question, go ahead. Uh, yes, hi everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, so uh, I'm Joseph from, from Harsh Hayata Trail. So we still don't have any 
official status in Lebanon, but we started a few years ago to uh, try to protect our area and see what we can do about it. And the question is, what would you suggest for like a new starting group uh, as a model to pick uh, in order to preserve an area? How would we choose between the Jabal Musa uh, approach or the Hash Ehden or maybe like another uh, approach? So maybe my question is not very academic, but uh, I think it's uh, very uh, important for us to be able to decide. And uh, since you've done some deep study about it, maybe you can give us some of your uh, advice. Okay, so um, it depends more on what you're aiming to protect. So, so in case of biosphere reserves, it's one of the it's one of the guidelines of the Man and Biosphere program to include the locals in the protection of the area. So, if you want to, if you are willing to, and you're aiming to protect the village, the people from the village and to involve them within the bias uh, within the area the protected area then you aim at a biosphere reserve but if your main focus for now is protecting the area then you would aim up to a nature uh, conservation because for example um, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, there was a protected area in Lebanon that became the Shouf protected area became a biosphere reserve later on. So it started as a uh, nature conservation but then became a biosphere reserve so it's more mainly depends on the aim, what your aim and what you're trying to protect like yeah, your priority to, preserve. yeah just to follow up on um, on uh, Raya's point to answer your question and i'm sure also uh, the Jabal Musa biosphere reserve team will be instrumental in helping you but uh, the, first there is a um, it's important to determine the area that you aim to conserve and also the biodiversity value of this area, because it's very possible as a nature reserve, you have many, many possibilities to conserve the area, ranging from a park to a heritage area to biodiversity rich area, strict protection, etc. So identifying the core uh, the focus of where you want to protect is the first step, but then as Raya indicated, um, and, and it's more you know, it's more in line with, with what we should be doing, which is operating as a biosphere reserve, because really there is no point in having a strict protected uh, site and then having all kinds of development and encroachment around it. So a biosphere and reserve makes sense, but also the effort is, is huge. So maybe the first step would be like uh, the Shuf biosphere reserve, start with the nature reserve and then move uh, by collaborating uh, with the community, et cetera, to actually applying to become a biosphere reserve and definitely learn from successful case studies, Jabal Musa and uh, Shouf. There's also something you need to take into consideration is that are, do you want an international committee? Do you want to be reporting to an international committee or are you just satisfied with working with the Ministry of Environment? So that's also uh, something to look into. Sabrina, you had your hand raised. Thank you. Thank you all for the uh, thorough answers. Yes, Dr. Talhouk, thank you so much for uh, giving the floor. And Rhea, nice to see you here. Well done. Excellent presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Miss you. Um, so my question was, and it was partially answered, um, actually regarding the access to the ecosystem services and the natural resources of both, of uh, Harj Ahden and uh, Jabal Musa. So uh, I understand that in Jabal Musa uh, Biosphere Reserve, uh, the local people can have access to the ecosystem services and the natural resources, Mahek, right? Correct? In what sense do you mean? Uh, for example, I don't know, seasonal collection of medicinal herbs uh, for their own uh, yes, livelihood. They have access to provisioning services, but within defined zones. Yes. So this is something that Rhea, uh, I don't think you, when you showed the map of uh, Jabal Musa Biosphere Reserve, she didn't really show the, the zones 
mean, no, I should have. Uh, can, reserve okay. includes a core zone that should be strictly core protected. buffer and transition and zone. a buffer. Yes. Okay. So, so the transition zone is where the people are part. Yes, the ecosystem services that are afforded by the biosphere reserve are more diverse and they change depending on the zone uh, that is defined. I see. And uh, so that's uh, regarding the provision and services. What about, for example, the cultural services, if they can bring someone, I don't know, if a local guide, um, uh, which is from the village, from the village around Jabal Musa, can bring a tourist, for example, with a permission? Like tourists are welcome to Jabal Muta. Joel, to answer, Joel, you want to respond to the cultural uh, dimension of uh, activities in Jabal Musa? Yes, uh, actually, I wanted to say that all kinds of activities uh, they follow uh, a certain, um, how do you say, uh, a management plan that is set already by uh, by the association or by the team, you know, the team of experts. So. Uh, whether it's harvesting or activities inside the core area or in other zones. Uh, it's not that it's uh, black or white, but it should follow certain criteria for sustainability. Uh, so uh, for the time being, yeah, for the time being, for example, I'm just gonna, for the, for the time being in Jabal Musa, we are trying as much as possible, you know, to, um, to let, uh, to, you, you know, to limit harvesting as much as possible where we have a uh, certain control. Uh, while in terms of uh, tourism and visitors, uh, we are allowing uh, visits because uh, at this stage, you know, uh, we want people to know more about Jabal Musa and this is directly linked to conservation. Uh, so um, we are now currently doing um, an, a tourism impact study, which will help us in the future uh, you know, in case we have a, a very big number of visitors or in case we notice there is impact in certain places where we shouldn't have. So this will help us uh, to uh, have a better strategy in terms of ecotourism. But uh, it's not like we have a certain, uh, how do you say, it's not like we have certain um, rules or uh, legal uh, a legal framework that is already set. Uh, all uh, these questions are uh, kind of, uh, uh, they evolve uh, with practice, but, but also with the local community, with the needs of the local communities, but also with the impact that we are observing on the ground. I, I believe that uh, in nature reserves, what's different uh, in, in the plot that is owned by the state, you know, uh, harvesting, uh, hunting, of course, I mean, in our place, too, but uh, all the, you know, uh, all the activities are forbidden by law. In our case, they are not forbidden by law. Uh, they follow uh, the management, uh, how do you say, the management uh, guidelines plan. of the biosphere mm -hmm. reserve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the management plan can change from year to year or every five years? Yeah, actually, we have a management plan for 10 years and uh, we are supposed to be up, uh, updating it next year, 2023. But we regularly do action plans or certain strategies for one thing or another, you know, for one topic. Thank you so like much. Like right now, we are, uh, we are right, like, for example, we did, uh, we, we already did a study on endemic species. It's part, it will be part of the revised management plan of the flora species and uh, what would be the impact on them. Now we are doing a study on ecotourism in general, and this will be part of the revised management plan that will take, that will happen next year. I well, see. You had so a question, you had your hand raised. Yes, before I actually, uh, you know, uh, what's interesting is that uh, we thought we were so different from Harsh uh, Ahdem because they are a nature reserve, they follow the, the government, they are, you know, they are basically owned by the government. But uh, it's very, very interesting to see that uh, we have lots of similarities with Harsh Ahdem, uh, despite, uh, uh, you know, the, different the, names and different. Yes, uh, despite the time difference, despite uh, the governance structure. Uh, it's very interesting that, to see that both protected areas have uh, uh, similar problems, similar challenges with the local communities, with the fundraising. Um, I did not expect to see these results, honestly. I expected to, to see, for example, that Harsh Ahdin was, was more uh, you know, tightly linked to the Ministry of Environment, but it's not the case. 
Uh, I expected to see more funding from the Ministry of Environment, but it seems that it's not the case. They also have uh, challenges similar to us. They have, uh, they have been facing challenges regarding that because the ministry, no, the ministry is in charge of the body, like as a higher body on the protected area. They should be supporting them yearly, but they haven't been seeing that. So خلاص, they just took action into their own hands to get their funding on their own. Mm. So it's like acting like a private, but with the name of the Ministry of Environment on them. Exactly. So uh, it's a, it's a, no, uh, it's a, it's a very interesting, uh, you know, so, some like uh, example, you know, to 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 see that uh, we are all on the same boat. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I was wondering if, uh, in terms of uh, impact, you know, uh, does the governance uh, uh, or impact or uh, how do we say uh, consequences of the protection? Uh, is the government structure related to uh, the impacts that we see on the ground or not? I think, uh, Joel, to answer your uh, question, I think yani, the, the result of Raya's thesis is that today, today Jabal Musa is operating like a nature reserve today because of lack of resources and capacity to actually tackle the, uh, the other zones and really embrace sustainable development. But because the, the agenda is uh, sustainable development and inclusion of local communities, on the long run, there will be a difference, physically apparent. Uh, but today, it is not possible uh, to, to really find a difference in terms of impact on uh, local community because uh, and the nature reserve of Eden is to conserve the biodiversity of Eden. While in your case, it's a broader and uh, it's showcasing sustainability and harmony with nature, etc. So it's uh, at the level of the core zone, uh, I think that you can measure how both approaches and the, the they end up conserving biodiversity in the core zone, in the case of the biosphere reserve and in the whole nature reserve. This is one level, but the impact on the community will take more time to appear because as Raya found in both cases, the first reaction of people is no. And whether it's a nature reserve or a biosphere reserve, there is a resistance because you're taking away from them and they don't see uh, the, uh, the benefit, which is very long term. But in both cases, also, Raya, correct me if I'm wrong, in both cases, they have started seeing uh, potential benefits, even though they may not be tangible at all levels, but they started to understand and on the long run, maybe it's better for us uh, to, to be in this uh, with this nature reserve or with this biosphere reserve. Now, in your case, the sustainable development dimension is going to have more impact. Uh, Justine, you have a, a, your hand raised. Yeah, hello. Thank you for the presentation. Just wanted to ask you regarding the private land included in these areas. Uh, do they sign yeah, forever, I mean, and they don't have like uh, the freedom to do anything they want uh, in their land? And yeah, they have restricted the uh, activities to do once they are in this protect within this protected area. I'm going to hear what... again uh, refer you to Pierre, I think, at this stage, because he's the one who founded and led this effort. Pierre, do you have any answer to this question? Joel, you want to answer that? I mean, uh, if you, are want you to... To... yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me say that by law, uh, Jabal Musa uh, has a, a legal designation by the Minister of Environment that is a uh, protected natural site. Okay, uh, and it's uh, yes, it is designated by the Minister of Environment, but it it doesn't include very strict uh, regulations, uh, such as the ones that are included in the uh, uh, legal, uh, you know, the legal aspect of nature reserves. So the the designation it's there, it is there forever, of course, unless the Minister of Environment changes its 
its mind. Uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, you are not allowed to have some uh, uh, activities uh, with certain, you know, with certain impact. You know, there is a, it's it's less restrictive than a nature reserve. Okay, uh, thank you. The, it, was that a question or? I, I think also, Joel, you can mention that we rent some of those private properties. Uh, we, we rent them in order to protect them, if you want to mention some of that also. Yes, uh, but, uh, this is uh, our particular case, of course, that uh, in, in our case, we, of course, we rent the land, the NGO rent the land from, from the landowners that are, you know, there's a variety of landowners, and we have long-term contracts, more than 10 years and uh, renewable and in the contract you mentioned that uh, you know uh, the landowners accept that their lands are included in the uh, you know uh, under the ministry of environment's uh, designation that is protected natural area so um, of course if we only have uh, the designation of the it is not enough uh, uh, it's definitely not enough we need to rent to protect Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, but I just need to mention one thing, please. Uh, because there were lots of questions about like uh, the, the protected area and what kind of protected area do we want? Actually, it, uh, what kind of protected area, not only do we want, uh, you know, uh, it's what kind of protected area can we, uh, can we have? because uh, there are the local communities, of course, but there are also certain criteria, you know, to fulfill in order to become a bicycle reserve, or in order to become a nature, uh, a nature reserve or something else, or even for the ICN categories, each category is very different from the other. So uh, basically we need to first answer the, the question of what do we have, like Dr. Carrefour said, what do we have in terms of culture, nature, local communities, and then we decide if we can go to the international designations or to the local designations at uh, what they think. Yes, absolutely, Joel, you are uh, correct. And there are specific guidelines that Antonio shared in the chat uh, to try and understand what are the different protected area uh, categories based on the management that is intended for these uh, specific areas. Any more questions or comments from the audience? Salma, I think we try very hard to involve local communities and to have sustainable development. You know, we have the guides and guards program. We have the bed and breakfast. We have also the local products, very strong now. A lot of people benefiting, even if you put a few hundred dollars or even less, in a household uh, once a month uh, through some activities, this is important. So it's a growing thing, you know, people at the beginning, they are not used to the concept and with time, if they can get a benefit, it becomes easier. So really the effort, the huge difficult effort is to get the benefit, but keep it sustainable. So it's not a benefit that kind of takes away from future generation. It's a very tough balance, very delicate. Uh, we try our best, but well, inshallah khair. We uh, hope we can succeed. Uh, Pierre, you are right because and, uh, developing economic benefit from and while conserving nature is not very evident. Otherwise, the whole world would have been like this. And this is why specifically uh, biosphere reserves are like laboratories, you know, testing, experimenting, exploring, because it's not uh, very evident or straightforward to derive a livelihood out without uh, uh, you know, uh, causing damage to the natural environment. So it's very commendable, whether it's nature reserves or biosphere reserves, the effort of understanding and developing models of uh, harmony with nature are needed everywhere. And, and the, the scope of the biosphere reserve is interesting because it in, in includes sustainable development at, at, at its core. 
exactly and i i see a question is grazing allowed for example this is a good uh, this is a good question to answer because grazing we would like it to happen where the woods are very difficult and very full and we would like to have some um uh, a lightening of the brush uh, there of the bush but people all always seem to graze in the same easy place so they go and uh, massacre the same place every year and where we need the grazing we don't get the grazing so this is life salma life is always a um, give and take a balance to find and it's a very delicate balance that we try to reach it's an effort it's an ongoing effort Okay, thank you very much for your input and your comments. Raya, thank you for thank uh, you. the time for your presentation. It's always good to see you. And uh, as usual, this uh, session is recorded and it will be on the YouTube page of uh, the project, the Edu Biomed Project website. And we will see you next Wednesday, I hope. And uh, also, uh, Joelle, if you need the presentation, Raya, she can send it to you as a PDF. I can send you my thesis if you want uh, to yes, say you need it. It's more detailed. Findings. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, Thank Raya. you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you next week, I hope, and have a great week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you.